Hey guys, we are the Moms of Furries. I'm Carrie. I'm Joelle. We're having a drive in beautiful Northwest Reno today. And we are gonna talk about some really important stuff. It's really about, you know, you maybe you just found out that someone you really care about is a furry. Mm -hmm. And you have a lot of questions. And we consider ourselves very much non-experts <laughs> when we want to share some information with you that we think might help answer some of those questions. What do you think, Joelle? Yeah, and you know, we have a series called, um, what is it, Your Kids Are Furry, Congrats. But when we went back and kind of reviewed, we feel like since we recorded then, we had that. We have just more knowledge, more information. So we thought we would answer some questions. And to be a little more um, relevant. Dive a little deeper. Dive a little deeper. We be a little meatier. Be a little meatier. We decided to go onto a search engine and ask what the most um, searched questions about furries were. And we decided that would be a great way to kind of know what to answer, what you guys want to know about. It turns out most of them are the, the questions that we actually get most frequently. Yeah, right? so that one was a great idea. And so we'll throw out some information here. And if that inspires any additional questions, we would hope that you would reach out to us and let us know. Because if you're having that question, probably a lot of other people are too. Right, and I think that's absolutely a great point. And that was, you know, it was a lot for us starting out. And we, we did a lot of research. It, it can be overwhelming. So wherever you are and however confused you are, know that we get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's a lot to learn. You do feel like an outsider very much from at the beginning, but that won't last long. No. Um, All right. So, so let's dive into it. Yeah. I'm going to jump in with the very first question. And this is a great one because it, it seems so basic, but it's really pretty, pretty big. What is the furry fandom? Right. Like, what is it? People hear furries, but they don't really know what the fandom is. So we always say the fandom is just like a group of people who... Um, Enjoy appreciate or appreciate, yeah. Anthropomorphic animals. Right. But we were watching um, the fandom again, Ash Coyote's The Fandom. And in the very, very beginning, someone says, yeah, that's like the um, dictionary definition. And, you know, it's the one that kind of people give out. But more accurately in their view, and I think it it's true. What did they say? It was um, like a, a social space, largely queer, where people are using anthropomorphic animals to kind of explore their identity. Uh -huh. And I think that is really spot on. That may not, that's not a direct quote, but something like that. Ooh, that was a big it is. I think that they mentioned the artistry, which is very important. I think it's a key piece of the fandom because mm -hmm. there are so many different aspects of art that you can explore and use to really um, explore your passion yeah. for the, the fandom. But you don't have to be an artist, so like just the, no. appreciating it or the creativity behind it is, yeah, I think even those who aren't artists or don't consider themselves artists are creative. Yes, absolutely. Largely. Or, or appreciate it. I, yeah. I'm not an artist who can draw or paint, but I love looking at those things. One of the things for me is the dancing. I'm not a great dancer. I will dance, but I love watching the dance competition. Oh, and the floor wars and all of that. Yeah, absolutely. So right. that one is a big one, and I feel like that's really what it is. It encompasses, it's just a social space where people are exploring their identities, who they are, they're interacting through anthropomorphic animals, and like being fans of different cartoons or movies or um, uh, what are, graphic novels, things like that. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. All that's right. It. So I think that, that is a really good explanation of the basics of what is the furry fandom, but let's talk about who invented it. So this is interesting because it's not something that I really thought about researching like in the beginning. It's just, it wasn't, and I like history, but it just wasn't on my radar, but a lot of people ask that. And admittedly, I don't know all of the details. I like, was very surprised when we researched it, actually, the information that we found. Mm -hmm. So apparently just in general, there, there are different aspects to it, but in general, it started with sci-fi back in like the late seventies, early eighties. Right. Um, but there's a great resource. There are a million resources to, to actually find more information, but one of our favorites is, um, I'm culturally effed. Yeah. So we'll link a video. They have like a summary of the history and it kind of breaks down 
where furry started. And it can get really <laughs> granular, which I thought, sorry to, to interrupt, no. but I thought was fascinating because even just researching for this video, I really got in the weeds of like, hey, Joelle, yeah. look at this. <laughs> <laughs> well, and um, going back to Ash's, the fandom, in the very beginning, the intro is like, we've always put words in the mouths of animals and we've used animals to teach our basic skills and interactions and stuff. So I think it's always been there, but to be a quote unquote furry started like late seventies, early eighties. Yeah, I think that as long as there have been anthropomorphic animals and way back with Disney and, and first animated right. films, people identified with it and yeah. really got into it. So what we would call a furry now has been going on forever probably, but yeah. I agree. All right, so moving on, how many people are furries? so many so many and I'd say it's almost impossible to really determine because you don't you can be furry but you don't have to be participating in the fandom and it's self-reported so right. finding statistics on that's pretty difficult but our estimation was just in the tens of thousands well like okay so you think about it there are cons where it's just going by like that kind of participation in for me it's a cons there are cons all over the world, conventions, yeah, um, all over the world and all the time. And what we estimated throughout the year, there could be three to four conventions every month. So all the time. And some of those can be just very few, like lower hundreds in attendance. But there are some that are like around 10,000 attendees. So I think we can safely say there are tens of thousands of furries possibly hundreds of thousands. Definitely. Def I would 100% agree. Are you wondering where I'm going? No. Okay, good. Because I don't know. I was just driving. Oh, so uh, I mean, I know where we're going. I was, I was going to say, I know where we're headed and this is not the direction, but we can get there from here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys know where you're going? Do you want to know where we're going? What should we say? <laughs> so we've, we've not got to spend a lot of time together here um, since I've moved almost three years ago, we've really only done BLFC, right? Like, and that when we're doing convention, we are focused solely on furry, but we have some traditions that we're trying to <laughs> squeeze in in a couple days and we're doing one right now. It's grocery store sushi. <laughs> it is, it is grocery store sushi, but it's very specific store, a very specific location. So and yummy. then we have such good sushi so yeah, anyway, we're, we're, we're go. really jazzed about that so anyway. you're along for the ride and we're going to be talking about furry on the way yeah um okay so anyway lots and lots of people absolutely so now we will break down some of the glo global demographics um when you think of what current what country has the most furries it is the u.s of a yeah significantly more as far as the research mm -hmm. that's been done again self self-reported research um interesting we found that culturally f did not have information about um japan's population of furries. no we think that that's science. because for science sorry yeah no that's fine um but we think that that might be because um japan has a lot of cosplay and and maybe they link why? that i don't know why We're not yeah sure. um speaking of so when you go to research demographics if you're interested if that's something you're interested in so for science they're an organ or they're a group out of um canada who they've been researching like scientifically researching furries the fandom for years and um you can just go to fursciencenceorg and check out all of their research findings there's so much information carrie was really telling me a lot of information that I did not know and we're pretty knowledgeable. And it was fascinating. It was so fascinating. I could have gotten lost on their site for just so forever. We highly recommend checking out First Science. But there are furries really all over the world. They're in Europe, they're in, in Canada, they're, they're just everywhere. They're South in China. America. Yeah. yeah. Everywhere. Yep. Um, even in those places that aren't reporting, we know they're out there. Yeah. All right. So now let's talk about what type of people are in the fandom? All the types. It's, yeah, all the types. Well, I mean, personally, we know if you want to talk about like um, occupations, for instance, if that's kind of the way you want to frame it, we personally know scientists mm -hmm. and um, we know astronauts. 
astronauts uh-huh. and we know content creators lots of content like high level content creators esports players uh-huh. lots of gamers engineers lots of engineers train conductors uh-huh. engineers a meteorologist a, a meteorologist <laughs> at least one but there are um security guards um students like it's there's no one first responders yeah yeah um there's no one type of person i i find there it just furries come from all walks of life absolutely so we've talked a little bit about what the fandom is and and what kind of folks represent the fandom um but there is we all know it's not a secret there is some negative views of the fandom so why is there that hate or that negative view of the fandom? What is it? Um, ah. We're attacked by a plastic bag. Um, <laughs> anyway, I think more than anything, it's just people not understanding it. Not, I think a lot of people let go of like silly or what they, they view as childish. So that's part of it. So they don't understand why anyone wants to dress up in you know, a fursuit or... I really think that is the thing, the word. Understand. They don't understand it. And a lot of times we don't like that, which we do not understand. Right. If Yes. And if it's out of the ordinary, if it's atypical, there are a lot of people who are uncomfortable with that because they feel like that means they're, they're an outlier. And a lot of people are, you know, that whole, um, instinct to stay within the crowd, the group for safety or whatever. But um, also, just media, sensational media, is a big reason why people, I think, have negative images of it because because it is, you know, when you see a big stuffed animal person who's maybe committed a crime, that's big news. It's sensational. And you know, it it really happens so infrequently, and it. Uh-huh. It tends to be the focus. We yeah. had somebody last night, we were live streaming, and they said something about the negative view of the furries because of the abuse to children. And that was very confusing to me. Because we've not really <laughs> seen that. I mean, not things, when there are people involved, humans involved in anything, there's going to be good and bad. That is what humans do. People will make poor choices and do bad things. But it, as a put, like if you put furry situations in comparison to any other situation where people may in, come in contact or be in charge of children or have access to children, there is not a higher percentage in furries. There's no way of of incident. So, yeah. but that type of stuff gets the press. Absolutely. Then there are there are politics involved and we we try not to be political although we have different op- definite opinions okay. and we're fine with sharing them. We are who we are. But and we also believe that some things are not political and they are just human rights. Human so. rights issues. Absolutely 100%. But you know, politi- politics definitely play a role in negative viewpoints. Right. For instance, well, in the times that we get involved, the the um, article in Insider about, you know, that was with us, that came to be because of the whole litter box rumor that we thought was hilarious that anybody actually believed that. So, whatever. Um, but I, I feel like that's it. It's like, you know, if you don't understand it, if you're not part of something, then you can other it, people in it, very easily. And I think that we've talked about this before. People in the fandom are often othered in some other way. They may be queer, like we mentioned before. They may be uh, neurodiverse. So we, we've talked about it before that a lot of times people in the fandom are already othered in some way. Yeah. They may be queer. They may be neurodiverse. Um, they could be othered in a few different ways. Yeah. And so this is a community that makes them feel safe and included. Right. Right. And it, it once again goes back to exploring who you are as a person, your identity. And it is, I know that people have different experiences, but overall our perspective is it is a safe environment to explore your identity. 100%. And 
When we encounter those situations of people hating furries, we love to have conversation like the person mm -hmm. last mm -hmm. night, really to understand where their viewpoint comes from and, and share ours and, and really see it as an opportunity to communicate. So if, if you encounter that, we would definitely encourage you to let that be a talking point. Right, and try to um, ask actual questions from, like not, we try really hard not to get upset or emotional in our answers or our questions, even though we may feel it, but we try to invite honest dialogue. Yes. And you know what? I would say every time that we've encountered it, we've walked away feeling like we have opened someone's eyes to a new perspective. Like it's not, I, I don't, I can't remember a time that we've walked away from that kind of conversation virtually or in real life feeling like let down. I think we always feel like maybe they're looking at it a different way now. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. So, so that leads us right into the very next question. <clears throat> Is being a furry inappropriate? Being a furry in itself is not inappropriate. That's because being a furry is whatever you make it, whatever you do within the fandom or whatever you do as a furry, right? And so, go ahead. Yeah, Sorry. so there are spaces within the fandom for all kinds of people mm -hmm. and people do lots of different activities. Right, well there are adults only spaces. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, there are lots of NSF, uh, NSFW, mm. Um, accounts and dialogue and actions and parties and whatever. Yeah, and lots of people are sex positive and we support that. You know, something consensual, legal, safe, safe, all of the things, that's fine. There are a lot of folks in the fandom who participate in 18 plus activities and that's great, but, but that is not in and of itself inappropriate and it is not a reflection of the fandom. No, because there are also, um, a, a lot of young furries there are people who uh just aren't interested in that kind of participation type which is totally fine so it's just there's such a broad spectrum that you can't say being a furry in itself is inappropriate and say going to conventions you may there may be things in common spaces that i'm trying not to lose the our recording device um that some people may deem inappropriate because everybody has different levels of comfort. We feel like it's very appropriate, but we just talk to our kids. If there's something that looks a little more adult or a little more kink or fetish, that's, I don't know, it just doesn't bother us as much as it might bother someone else. And it's fair to say that um, there is kink and fetish out there and lots of people are enjoying that that are not that part of furries, <laughs> yes. right. <laughs> that have nothing to do with furry that are just separate things so that's in the world not just in the furry fandom so once yes. again it's just part of being human and population and you have to find where your comfort level is in it and participate at that level yes absolutely so that um can lead to some interesting conversations mm -hmm. but so let's pop down to our next question which is Let's say your kid has come to you and they have said, like, I'm really interested in this furry fandom stuff. How do you support your kid? Oh, and that we've, we're really, really, really grateful right now. We're getting, starting to get a lot of pants coming to us because we did start out, um, we started our brand, Moms of Furries, to be there for a reference or resource for other parents. And that did not happen. We actually started out interacting more with young adults and kids of furries. I mean, kids they're not who were feeling furries. like they're getting supported by their immediate circle of people. Right, or not, not even sure knowing how to talk how, to them. How to share this part of their life with them or interest. But now, in this last probably year, we've really started getting more interaction with parents and that is the, they want wonderful. to know how do we support our kids which is super cool yeah and I, it's definitely one I would say our biggest question used to be how do I tell my family and now one of our biggest questions is how do I support my kid and we have had parents come to us in person and ask that question and and we love the opportunity to discuss it but the number one thing is if, if your kid is talking to you keep them thankful. talking yeah. yes. <laughs> ask questions so if your child let's just do like scenario your your kid comes to you and what you feel like is out of the blue and says hey 
I think I'm a furry, and I think that I want to do, you know, be part of the furry fandom. What does the fan, what does being furry mean to you? That's the first thing. You, what does so? What would you like to do? How do you want to participate? You know, you can ask. What do you like about it? Um, have you developed a persona? Do you, which is just a, a persona, furry persona? You know, your own character, which is fascinating in itself because it's something that can be anything you want it to be. But ask your kid, and honestly. Honestly, sometimes knowing how they have developed their persona, you may have be able to key in on some strengths that they see in themselves that you can start helping build up or whatever. So you mentioned persona I, and I think that that's fantastic. So that mm -hmm. is part of the vocabulary of being in the fandom. Learn the lingo so you'll understand what your kid is saying. Your fursona is your persona. Learn what a fursuit is. Learn... Um, we have a, poodling right we have a video I mean it we've learned uh, expanded our vocabulary in the years since but it is very basic like beware be aware don't be what is it don't be scared be aware don't be scared be aware I'm old I forget things um but you need to know what language might be concerning where you need to have more conversation about it you know some terms or whatever or things that are just completely innocent and you are just unfamiliar Ooh, 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 yeah. Um, and and well, you know what though? A lot of furry vernacular or uh, vocabulary has made its way into mainstream. It is. I think that's because there's secret furries now. I will say, Joelle sees furries everywhere. I do see furries, but I also everywhere. think she's not wrong. And that that's the thing. There are furries and queer people all around that aren't happy that they don't happen to share that information and that's fine but if you are aware of the lingo I think you'll be surprised at where you might hear it yes or if you're edu you've educated yourself to know what hyena agenda is mm -hmm. like you can find some little clues as to do but okay so but let's get back to how do you support your kid so talk to them mm -hmm. right Definitely talk as much as they're, listen as, as much as they're willing to talk, ask questions, um, and then remember it and follow, follow some content creators and see what's happening out there. Well, yeah, see if there's something you can connect on. We always say to the kids, what do your, you know, what do your parents like? Do they like dancing? Then maybe share some dance competitions, whatever. But you could also do that in reverse. You could say, you know, I really like information. I'm a data person. I need you could go to first and you are I am and you're like the arts and dance and stuff and not that I don't like it but just for me to learn about something so for so me it was great. definitely the dancing I was able to really understand the fandom and appreciate it from that aspect but for you it was the numbers I do like the so data. look for the thing that's meaningful to you and and then look for the content creators that you connect with you may not connect with something like I don't connect with anime and I have an anime fan kid that talks to me about it all the time now do I understand half of it no am I engaged and I try to learn and there there are a couple that I can maybe sort of connect with and we talk about those so do that with furry find a couple things some creators that you can follow and just get to know and also a great thing is know who your kids are following um, I think that's a big help yeah absolutely if they're willing to share it then then follow who they're following so you'll hear what they're hearing yeah I mean uh, I know if you've heard us talk about this kind of thing before you know I felt like especially in the very beginning the connection like us um, my older furry now um, when I knew like there was a new suit by one of their favorite makers that was you know being um, sold at auction or sold I was able to say oh my gosh did you see this new suit and we could talk about it and it was something that was neutral because back then it was like right at that age where Sometimes it's hard to find um, a nice neutral topic to talk about, like those teenage years that can be full of angst. <laughs> right? 
but that was something that we could connect on and it didn't really have anything to do with, like whether the dishes were done that night yeah and know? for us it was making collars i sew and my mm -hmm. kid wanted to make a collar yes let's do that so we went to the fabric store we got all kinds of webbing and, and stuff and we made all those collars and mm -hmm. that was great fun so it can be something so small but you can really connect and, and share something together which is so nice it is and then of course you can attend conventions take your kids to conventions for me and for meets um we've had recently we've had a lot of people asking about that a lot of parents yeah i think we, i would love to find out more about for meets um so i think that they aren't as common as they used to be because of the pandemic but they will probably come back as things open up right so um you can go to furrycons.com furrycons right mm -hmm. with the s yes um and they have i don't know who operates and, and populates the information um, but they basically have all of the conventions around the world by their dates. And I think they also, <laughs> so they have links to the websites and you can go there. Uh, we're actually going to do another video, hopefully while we're together about how to register and what you do at a convention for first timers, because we've had a lot of parents concerned about that as well. Right. Absolutely. Um, as far as meetups and fur meets, those are more difficult to find but what we suggest um you can go on to social medias most social medias <laughs> on the social the, medias all of the social medias <laughs> go to the social medias go to the various ones and just google like your town furries and there are lots of times you're going to find groups um like i know that there are reno furries i know that there are uh, furries, Spokane furries, there are Seattle furs, like sack, sack furs, because they go bowling. So just kind of, you just play around online, Google like your town furries or fur groups. And I think, be careful when you just do a search into your furries though. Just be aware. Be aware. Don't be scared, be aware. No. But anyway, and then um, what you can do is when you find any contact information, just directly contact them. And if you are a parent with young furs, say, Hey, do you guys do fur meets that are, um, that have, you know, minors in attendance? Are you, are you welcoming to that? Because there are a lot of people that are like, yeah, we have kids come all the time. And then your kids can meet people who are just have that one thing in common. And that can build a, fr a friendship. Also, when you go to a convention, you might want to look for one that has the young furry chill space. That's us. That's us. It's kind of what we do. Um, so we uh, host our, if you're not familiar with the Young Furry Chill Spaces, we host a, a space that's dedicated to young furries and their adults at conventions. And what can they do there, Joelle? Oh, they can do so many things. They can play games. They can, they're most popular by far from the get-go. They can make their own badge. badge. Yeah. And we laminate. We have lanyards and um, we take card games and things like Connect Four and that kind of. Can you tell we're proud of it? We're, we love the best. it. We are really proud, but it's good. We also take things like um, noise canceling headphones, like and phone chargers. So if you forget your charger, we have cables for every kind of type of device, um, and like a fast charging station. And what we find, people use our space as their base. Like they'll come in when they first register and come through registration line. They'll come into our room and they'll do some things and then they'll go out, you know, they'll go through their schedule and decide what panels they're going to go to, what events they're going to go to, because there are always too many things. You cannot do everything. I don't think. Nope. And one really, really beautiful thing is young furs get to meet other young furs and connect and share art. Like we see people making kids, making badges for other for kids. Others, yeah. It's well, so and parents cute. can meet other parents and yes. they can chat and like, um, the fellowship of saying, like yeah I get you I get it and we have watched we've been doing this for over five years now and we have watched kids who met years ago reconnect at conventions where they may not get to year see each other year after year. in person any other place but they do and they meet there and then they go do the convention together and then it's just really really cool and we do um, like in Seattle we do a dance um, uh, a night dance from normally till midnight so the parents fun. hate that <laughs> So much fun. But the kids have like their own little rave and they are just silly and they're dance. Oh my gosh, it's so great. So what we always suggest is if you have, um, if you are close to a convention where we are hosting our Young Free Chill Space, it is a 
no pressure. Like, you know, you're going to have parents, you know, that you're going to have young furries. It's a good place to start. Not to plug us, but it's true. And actually, we won a really cool award at the oh, at Anthony Northwest. We did. We we won um, the Founders Award for our service within the fandom, and that was just amazing because it's so meaningful. It is meaningful. We did start this just to kind of um, be there for our kids and to tell other parents like this is the, this is it's no okay. case case. It's okay. But we've turned into or um, this has turned into something that we're really proud of. We're proud of our work within the the fandom and and just it's amazing so, so call to action call to action oh and you can find out go to our website mofurries.com that will say m-o-f-u-r-r-i-e-s dot yes. com and you can have our all of our contact informations there you can see what we do you can support our work um and link to our etsy shop for our merch yes we have some really cool merch you can oh support gosh. us by buying merch and and wearing it it's super fun and super cool and you can also just support us directly yep if that's something that you feel like everything's on our website, just go through that. And if you really have any questions, comments, or anything, please reach out to us. Let us know. We'll respond. And I think that's it for now, right? Thank you so much. We're going to go get this drive with us. We're going to go get yes, this. Sushi. Sushi. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye.